Thanks everyone for coming here today for another episode of Ash Conversations. It's been a little while since we've done one of these. Today we have a special guest, the one and only Zane, recently, recently sponsored by Golden Guardians. In 2019, he got ranked 6th on the 2019 MPGR, originally from MDVA, with some crazy results recently, featuring a 1st place at Genesis, a 4th place at Smash Summit 9, 2nd at Big House, 1st at DreamHack Rotterdam, and 3rd at Super Smash Con. So, how are you doing today, Zane? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing really good. Playing a lot of Melee, uh, streaming a bunch, just on the same routine, same grind every day. How are you feeling like uh, about your Melee performance lately? 2019 has been <laughs> off to kind of a wild start, right? Yeah. Um, I feel I feel like I, my peak play is able to take tournaments, which I'm happy about. And it's all about raising that level of consistency. Um, feeling good about my play. Uh, just because, especially because Mega and I are the ones who practice the most and we've been getting like good results. So that's always good to see. Um, Summit was a little, I'm still a little sad about it. I honestly, if I'm being real, I've already like forgotten about Genesis. <laughs> like I, the high of that, the emotional high was like lasted a week or so. And then kind of, I was just like so pumped for Summit. And now I'm just like riding the, the, the low, the, the, the sad wave. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to like talk through your Summit a little? Sure. Like yeah. Um, I think I played really, really well the first two days. Uh, Friday and Saturday mm -hmm. um, was playing really hot against Foxes. Kind of, kind of whooped Leffen, kind of whooped IBW. Um, I was I beat two Falcons, Wizzy and None, which I was happy about because that's always been a problem matchup for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was satisfying. And then I got reversed through it by Axe, which hurt. But He's I been think kind that of my a demon a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think. I can see the answer to the matchup so clearly now from that set. Like, I know exactly what I need to do. Um, I personally think that Marth beats Pikachu, so I, I'm not going to give up <laughs> on that matchup. Um, but I feel I feel like I deviated from my game plan a little after, like, around game three, I got this, I got gimped at, like, 20% or something, and then I started getting a little more nervous around the corner. So <laughs> I think that was a good sign for the future of our sets. Um, felt good about that. Then the last day I played a little underwhelming. I think the problem with Summit, or like the crazy part about it, is that it's so taxing on your mm -hmm. mental game and just stamina. Um, I, I have to do a better job of regulating that because I went super try hard, like <laughs> in the in the area that really doesn't matter as much. Like I could have I could have underperformed in that area by a significant margin and still gotten into the winner's bracket yeah so by the day three i definitely played a subpar especially against club which kind of sucked and then i didn't play too hot versus mango so the fact that that's still able to net fourth is something that i'm actually if, if i think about it logically it's, it's pretty good yeah but just trying to raise that consistency i know like mango always talks about like raising like your bad play <laughs> and like that's what matters the most it's like that, i think like, that's when you're playing yeah. okay Mm -hmm. but, that's really well, important for melee with summit is it kind of weird like one thing i've always noticed like it's so quiet in that room when you're playing like how is, yeah is it weird getting in the mood to just be like okay this set is worth like there's a lot on the line but it's just like you two in this quiet ass room like is that like different from like normal tournaments and whatnot <laughs> it for sure is it, it kind of adds another layer of intensity that you don't get from uh typical majors, which obviously the crowd is something that's crazy and has its own uh, type of challenges, but yeah. the like sheer <laughs> dead silence of the room is pretty, uh, it's pretty strange. Yeah. Um, especially when someone pops off like mid game or like after game, it's just like comes out of nowhere. It's like, yes. And you just like, you hear everything. <laughs> you're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, the guy's right next to you. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty strange. Yeah. But you get used to it. Yeah, it's like, uh, I can't imagine, like, a huge H-Box pop-off, like, right next to you in that room, like, the floor is oh, just God, shaking. No. Yeah, <laughs> that would, uh, that would end me. I don't think he has done, like, a crazy, crazy pop-off in that room, maybe because he's cognizant of that, yeah. but yeah. I forgot who it was, but I know, like, someone during a set was just like, I'm not used to people talking while I'm playing, 
and like someone's just like speaking themselves mid set. Yeah, yeah. I wonder <laughs> if that's a thing that like Cody, yeah. uh, I can I could hear him like mumbling, just, just like just things to himself to like keep him motivated. I'm like, yeah. that's that's cool, but uh, like I wish I I should probably just wear headphones. <laughs> and then F Fiction was doing that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty silent when I play. It's a it's a cool environment though, because like even like as a viewer back at home, like you know like when it gets like last stock, like you like <coughs> crank up the audio in the room and all you hear is like the controller sounds. And it's just like right. It yeah, just yeah. gets like super tense. It's pretty cool. Yeah, though. but I'm um, sure that was kind of crazy. My accent, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Those those sets like hurt my my heart as a Marth main sometimes. Yeah, so I feel like every Marth main just like wants to watch Axe lose to a Marth. And then, like, so bad. everyone yeah. else is just, like, a Pikachu fan. And it's just, like, god damn it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> people people gravitate towards Pikachu because Axe yeah. is the only one that plays him. So yeah. it makes sense. Also helps just, that Axe is, like, pretty hype as a person. He like, goes in all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, as a person as well. Yeah. yeah. And also play style-wise, like, appeals to a lot of people. Yeah. How do you feel yeah, about, like, sure. your sets with him? Because you're talking about how, like, you feel like you have a clear picture now. Like... How has that changed over, like, I don't know, like, I guess, like, the last year? Especially since, like, um, Genesis 6, you also had, like, a pretty close set with him. Yeah, I, Genesis 6, I feel like I shouldn't have had a close set with him, honestly. Uh, I, I was going in pretty blind to the matchup at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I still somehow managed to take a game five just to, like, good positioning and stuff. Um, now I have a better understanding of how to combo Pikachu, of how to keep him in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about staying center stage is what I realized. As soon as I'm scrapping the corner, I'm making a mistake. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to be there. So like in my head throughout Summit, I was like, go back to center, go back to center, go back to center, like telling myself until that needs to become ingrained. And when that becomes ingrained, I think uh, I'll have a way easier time. And I also played versus, I don't know if you know him. His name is Tyler Swift. Um, not familiar with him. Is that his tag too? <laughs> his tag. It's his tag. His name is just like Dan, <laughs> I, but I guess he's just like a Taylor Swift fan or something. But he's from Tri-State and now is an MDVA for college. Mm -hmm. So I never play him a good amount, and he's like, I would say the second best Pikachu. Um, good practice. So that definitely has helped a lot, and I'm going to keep playing versus him, just to get more exposure in the Pikachu matchup. Mm -hmm. Has that just been your main like practice? That in like watching your vods or. Like labbing too. <laughs> yeah, I think before Genesis, I actually practiced lab versus Pikachu. Mm -hmm. so I figured I was fifth seed, Axe was fourth. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna play Axe, but <laughs> it didn't, didn't end up happening because he lost to he lost in pools to Panda. Yeah. So I ended up playing Shroomed in that spot instead. So definitely before Genesis, that was like my main practice. That Puff and Falco, mm -hmm. I just grinded that a bunch. Are you like hype when you see you have to play Axe or is it just like kind of dreading playing Pikachu again or you kind of just want to prove to yourself that you can do it? I want to play him at every tournament. <laughs> <laughs> just because I, it, the fact that I haven't beaten him yet gets on my nerves. <laughs> so every chance that I get to play him, I'm just like, let's just go all in. I was a little upset at Summit that it was so early because mm -hmm. he was a second opponent I played after, uh, shoot, who did I play first? None. It was yeah. none into X, and I was like, it's like 12 p.m. Like, I, I was like, I haven't played that much yet. So, like, I, because usually that's like a winner's quarters, winner's semis kind of match. Yeah. And at Summit, that's just your second match. So, like, <laughs> I still think I handled it pretty well. Mm -hmm. But I, I definitely want to play him at every major I'm at. That's sick. I like that. I like you two playing. Like, I feel like it's like kind of becoming almost like a storied rivalry. Like, Everyone just I, I think I need to take a set. For sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, you're just gonna take that one set, you know, and it's just gonna be like back to back, hopefully, for all the I do fans out there. I I do feel that it's gonna happen like that. Um, <laughs> have you ever cause... talked to any of the like UK Marth mains because they have like a single Pikachu out there, and they <laughs> all just like lab Pikachu stuff and like share it so they can beat this one PR Pikachu. I need to talk to them, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure they have some good ideas, especially for edge guarding. <laughs> uh, I feel so lost. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like big labbers out there, actually. Like they just have... Gotcha. I know Europe in, in general, uh, Sechi is really heavy on the labbing yeah. side. And, yeah. 
So past summit though, like, um, what's it called again? So you, you really just kind of like road past that Genesis high, huh? Like, do you ever just wake up and you yeah. think like, damn, I, I won Genesis. That's sick. Or <laughs> for the first, like, so the way it works is the day after Genesis is just like this incredible feeling. Like anything bad could happen to me that next day. <laughs> like I could step in a puddle and just be like smiling still. It's, <laughs> it's just like this, uh, this wave around me, nothing can go wrong. And then about a few days after, I was just pumped to compete again. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, I want to just keep doing this. So I, I trained heavy for Summit. Um, and now that I lost at Summit, like, I could have gotten second at Summit, and I'd still be feeling super sad. <laughs> it's just, competing, competing is crazy. I don't, it's, but it's, it's addicting. I love it. So, have you like noticed like your feeling towards competition changed since you like first started playing till now? like how you take losses or i think i've always been pretty static in terms of how i've my mentality at least mm -hmm. it's been become more nuanced the more experience i've gained but i've always never gotten salty at losses and i think that helped me a lot for like a growth mindset uh i get sad for sure but uh i think the the main trend that i've always had in my career when it comes to competition is not letting my self-worth tie too much towards actual competition, towards melee. Mm -hmm. Like if you tie those two things together too much, you're destining yourself for some sort of failure and also just emotional harm. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's a, like having a support system with my family and friends. Like I know I can always turn back, even if I got last place at the next major, mm -hmm. obviously it would hurt but I wouldn't think of myself as less of a person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, that's a key thing that's always persisted throughout my career. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. Cause like, I remember thinking, I was like looking at like the old, like Armada H box sets and just watching how like destroyed Armada would get after you like loses to H box. You'd just be so sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I can't imagine like that level of pressure at like the top level. Yeah. It's insane. I think, it ended up working like that worked for him in a unique situation mm -hmm. yeah. where he he felt like his lively like his livelihood his <laughs> self-worth was on the line every time he played so i mean that pressure is insane i don't want to yeah. play melee like that uh i think i think mango is kind of similar to me in the fact that he he loves competition but he also has like his fans his stream yeah. like that underlying support system outside of the game yeah. even though he wants to do really well so i think i think that's important to have and uh i guess like to bring things back more like was melee the first game you ever played competitively like what was zane like pre melee uh i was still a nerd <laughs> um, i didn't compete though i i, I, did, I did like track and soccer uh -huh. but that wasn't like i wasn't like crazy competitive about it like I played in high school. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I played a lot of single player games. Like I had a PS3 in high school and I was I was kind of like a I would hunt like for trophies in, <laughs> on my PS3 and like go for 100% in every game and stuff. Uh, what's your favorite platinum trophy you have? The one that you're the most proud of? I'm trying to think. It's really hard actually. <laughs> I guess Uncharted 2, because I it wasn't the platinum, it was having it a hundred percent. Because there was DLC online that was insanely hard to get. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like 0. 0.0001 percent of people have this trophy. Yeah, and I got it, and I was like sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's sick. But then, uh, how did you kind of find melee? Because you were like a newer school player and everything, so yeah um i played as a kid uh my sister had a gamecube so growing up we played pretty casually like mm -hmm. maybe at the age of five so i understood how the game worked like at a very base level but uh one of my friends in high school um he bought a melee setup to our computer science class <laughs> and we didn't really do like that class was so like laid back that our professor just after we got our coding done would just let us play yeah <laughs> um, and I was the best out of my friends there. 
just because I had some basic knowledge. I still played Marth back then too. Marth was always the coolest to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he ended up finding the local scene in Virginia. He, he told me I should go to Arlington, Virginia, where they had Smash at Clarendon, mm-hmm. which was back then TO'd by Nintendo. Dude. Uh-huh. And this was in May of 2014. So I went to that. This was right after, right as I was graduating high school. And from that first tournament, I was completely hooked. <laughs> like I was, I saw everyone, like people are just insanely, insanely good. Yeah. Uh, even the even the people who beat me, like they got, they ended up getting like 49th. I was like, what? That guy got 49th? Do you remember <laughs> your first like? losses in tournament? Yeah. 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 I'm, I still see the guy I lost to like every now and then. His, his tag is KVN. His name is Kevin. And uh, he was giving me a bunch of tips. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I lost to him my first round. And eventually I kept going to those throughout the summer. Mm-hmm. Didn't really get that much better at that point. But then the thing that really had me completely hooked was when I went to Virginia Tech, uh-huh. there was a Smash Club. When I was looking for, when I was going to college, I was like, I'm going to join all these different clubs. I'm going to be outgoing and active. <laughs> I was like, I joined the ping pong club. I just could do <laughs> intramural sports. I just played Smash my entire freshman year. Like, That's a good <laughs> I found the Smash. <laughs> yeah, I found that. So basically, my my freshman year was, I studied business IT. So the first, my first semester was a joke. Like, I <laughs> I had like intro to business classes that were just I had to use like a quarter of my brain. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. So I had like so much free time. So I played melee eight hours a day formed a really close friend group with people at my college and it was awesome because everyone was like so close in skill level so that really helped nurture a really good competitive vibe Mm -hmm. Uh, and from there i i got better through my college scene into the local scene in mdva went to a national my first national at super smash con got like 33rd i think that was your first national super smash con 2015 yeah that, that was the first year right yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was my first. Um, before that, I had been going to like Xanadu's and uh-huh. uh, just my college weeklies. The Xanadu's were pretty far <laughs> for you too, right? Like yeah, you know, uh, close, probably a couple hours drive. In, I'm guessing. In traffic, it takes like an hour and a half. Oh, so far. Yeah. yeah I, I feel like most people never realize how like MDVA was like super spread out, like mm-hmm. chill, like chilling and uh like chewed out had to like drive like a couple hours right just to get to xanadu for maryland stuff yeah yeah for sure um luckily now virginia has a good local scene with the cave yeah and uh actually the maryland scene is probably weaker right now just because xanadu xanadu doesn't get as crazy numbers Mm -hmm. um xanadu used to be the thing yeah i remember i actually went to like one of those because i went to the first (laughs) smash con and i just like went to the xanadu before it Oh, uh, well, oh, I think I was yeah. there, actually, where Mewtwo King was there, and... Uh, I don't know if Mewtwo King was... I don't remember who exactly was there, but... Ice might have been there. They might have. It was, like, such a long time ago. Yeah. So you could We could have both been there. I'm not too sure, though. Um, But do you remember who you played at SmashCon that year? Mm-hmm. When you got 33rd? Yes. I... I beat... So first, I lost to Hugs, two to one, and I was bad. So yeah. this was kind of funny because <laughs> the first game he four socks me, and I'm like, yeah. "Shit, all right." <laughs> Second game, I two sock him, and I was like, "Huh." Yeah. I wonder why that happened. And then third game, he four socked me. It was the weirdest two one of all time. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know if that's ever happened before, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that happened. And then I beat Junebug, mm-hmm. who's Virginia as well. Yeah. And then Siren is also Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> and then I lost to Shoot at. Were you like um were you taking like names off games off these people before like SmashCon? Like were you ranked in MDVA at the time? No, like, not at the time. Um I think I was on like borderline of being I, I was like they they did a top twenty after yeah. SmashCon and I got like twenty one. Like I wasn't officially ranked. <laughs> Which let me go to the Arcadian that I won. So that was that was like a cool 300 bucks. So I was kind of happy about it. <laughs> um, but I was taking names off of like, uh, not beating really the top heavy part of the region, but I was beating Wenbo, maybe, Cypher Phoenix, 
uh, SG played back then. I don't know yeah, if you know him. I know Dashin. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're friends with Mike. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I stayed with um, them. Well, I stayed at, like, their house when I came for SmashCon. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. He, does, he doesn't play anymore. I think he yeah. plays a lot of Overwatch and stuff. But... Yeah, I know he's out in, like, NorCal now. Maybe oh, is he? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. That's wild. You beat Junebug. Was that, like... Because I know you yeah. and Junebug had, like, history. Because everyone would joke, like, Zayn's out here beating, like, top 20. And then, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, June... Junebug at the locals. <laughs> I think June will always have a good chance of beating me. Really? Just because he understands... I think I'm favored, but he's really good at that matchup. And he also understands... Like, he coaches me. Yeah. <laughs> so he, like has a deep deep understanding of how i play uh probably better than anyone else so he he, he gets my habits down pretty hard mm -hmm. um but we actually played last night uh he, he doesn't play that much anymore but mm -hmm. i was salty i lost a plup so <laughs> uh we, we even, we're gonna try and play a lot more so i can get better versus chic nice yeah so it's like, would you consider Smash Gone like your like one of your breakout performances, or like where do you see like your first like first really big win, and then I wouldn't con yeah like first like breakout performance at a tournament. I wouldn't consider Smash Gone a breakout. Um, I think for me it was good mentally. I was like, okay, I can, I can hang, <laughs> like <laughs> with with a lot of these guys. My first breakout, I feel like, was. Big House Six, where I beat Plup. Yeah, which was like complete. It was one of my first top 100 wins, and he was like, it was Plup. <laughs> so yeah. that was kind of strange. Um, and that tournament was really good for me. I beat Tafo into Plup into KJH, mm -hmm. and then I was I was really bad at the Marth at this point. So I got 3 would by both the Moon and PPU. Mm -hmm. So I got 17th that tournament. But then my name kind of started uh, floating around a bunch more. Yeah, I remember um, when you beat Plup, Mike was popping off super hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was so happy. Um, <laughs> the person who filmed it on YouTube, it was actually Koji, Emo Dinosaur. Oh, the hobby. Um Yeah, yeah. He, he filmed it on his phone and it's still on YouTube. It's like, <laughs> you can eat. there was like a crowd behind us and they were popping off. <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. Koji's a homie. <laughs> He's awesome. Uh so you, you think Plup and then like from there it just kind of started picking up like tournament after tournament, like just getting better. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so for sure. Then eventually you got like the, uh, like the one on Leffen, was that like Full Bloom? Was that? It was uh, Smash and Splash 3. Oh, like Smash and Splash 3. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was important for me. That was <laughs> uh, the first round of top 64 and it was the reverse 3-0. Mm -hmm. Do you remember um, like what it was like beating Leffen in that situation. Yeah, I felt like I was going to throw up because <laughs> <laughs> I came back, I was destroying him game five. Like, I cheesed him so hard. This was when my Marth, like, pretty much only <laughs> dash chance grab in the corner still. So, like, that was my modus operandi every time. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I was up three stocks on one, and then he starts turning it up, and it goes to the last stock, and he could have dropped down and shined me, but instead he did that slow get up. Mm-hmm. I ended up getting a tipper. It's sort of like the camera cut away. But I remember at that moment where he could have shined me, yeah. I was like, I might throw up. In my head, I was like, I might throw up. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like hella like, nervous. I, yeah, I was really, really jittery and nervous. Uh, just because he was left in, and I was like not ranked like, top 100. <laughs> you weren't um, even top 100 then too? God damn. I don't, I don't think I I think I ended up getting 66 after that. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, that was, a. Uh, those, those were good times. <laughs> <laughs> After you, like, started, you know, taking names, do, like, people, like, that you knew outside of Melee just, like, start finding you because of Melee again? Like, just, like, your old high school friends and whatnot? Yeah, it started slow. Like, a couple of high school friends were like, oh, shit, that's, they'd message me on Facebook and be like, that's awesome. <laughs> now, now it's, like, way more abundant because <laughs> after Genesis... It was like a lot of high school people. Yeah. Uh, I think they probably saw my like profile picture or something. Oh, and like, like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just like people, people, yeah. people from high school that I was like, well, I never thought I'd have contact with this person again. It's crazy. <laughs> <That's> so funny. <laughs> yeah. But like, what do you think was like 
what do you think took you from like, you know, like taking names off like ranked MDVA to, you know, beating Plup and then like beating Weffin and then kind of ascending to the place you are now? Like, um, I'm just always a good headspace with the game. Um, also, I think melee environment is really important. Like the community you play in and how positive they are in terms of competition really impacts you as a player. So at Virginia Tech, I think that was always my home base for like my come up. And yeah. like everyone there was always down to grind and was like <laughs> really, really positive. They're like some of my closest friends. Yeah. So I think having that intertwined with Melee made it really easy to improve uh, just because it, it was part of my lifestyle, you know? Yeah. Like hang hanging out for me was Melee. Yeah. Not good. Um, yeah. And then just keeping a consistent mindset, never getting too salty, having like the perfect balance of ambition, but also staying grounded uh, was pretty key for me. And then it, it's just kind of a natural progression of how I got better from the local scene to the regional to national. Um, like if I think back, if I like chart it out, uh, it, it seems very, very natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything? Is there anything that you think like people are doing wrong, like when you view some grinders, and then you're just like uh, kind of shake your head at them for doing some things? Maybe, that's like, a good question. Things. Yeah, I. Uh, I think a big epidemic <laughs> in melee is that people are too reliant on the wisdom of top players. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see it in Twitch chat all the time. It's just like asking they want to be spoon fed at every question and that's not the way you need to build your own framework to get better that's unique to you mm -hmm. and then you ask supplemental questions of stuff you've already built upon like you, you, if, if you ask someone to give you the blueprint it, you're not going to get way better that way yeah. like sure you'll you'll improve marginally but you need to make a blueprint that's unique to you and i think that's that's pretty pretty important when it comes to melee and then another thing i'd say is people over prioritize neutral game instead of punish game at the beginning mm -hmm. um which is good to think about is how you get your openings and stuff but i think it's really important to build a, a disgusting punish game first <laughs> like that 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 was how i did it where it's like yeah. okay i can grab a fox and kill him it's like how do i get my grabs <laughs> <laughs> like that was kind of the progression of it yeah how do you go about like grinding your punish game? Like, did you just twenty XX or like just play a lot? Or I didn't even do twenty XX. I uh, I just played a lot against CPUs, mm -hmm. and I would just listen. At college, I would listen to in my dorm. I would listen to new albums. Just like that was a way that I enjoy solo practice. Was like mixing the activities of new music mm -hmm. and solo practice and fusing them together. So it was a very enjoyable experience, like almost relaxing experience for me to take breaks outside of schoolwork. And just do that um that was that was really important and then also in friendlies i think just spamming certain punish options until it's ingrained is really important um i think tof was yeah. talking about that he's just like every time i play zade he just does like one thing like power shield up tilt every time <laughs> yeah that's that's a, that's a newer one i'm trying to implement <laughs> that's funny that he said that but yeah that's that's how i get better is I'll see a tech. So like, the way it started was I watched PPU's university videos, <laughs> uh, where he had like tutorials on edge canceling, no impact lands, pivoting. I would just take each one. So say edge canceling, right? I'd yeah. be like, okay, I want to put that into my game plan. So I would spam it in solo practice until the motion became comfortable. Then in friendlies, I would spam it against my opponent and be like, okay, when is this good? Where am I getting hit? When is it good in my punish tree? until it's second nature and I know when to use it. Mm -hmm. And you do that for pretty much everything within the game. But that's, I think that's that's a good key to mastery in Melee or anything yeah. as a matter of fact. Yeah, I think that's like uh, Sammy. He like preaches that a lot, like his reaction points. Yeah. Are not. And if anyone's watching this, you should subscribe to Drugbox's Patreon and learn all about Melee. I actually, I actually just did it um, after I talked to him at Summit and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get a couple lessons in March, just nice. 
just just to see like i i can't hurt like i feel like his input is very valuable so yeah that's um, that's excited. kind of the approach he takes at least is like what he teaches is like <clears throat> always having like this idea of like what to do in certain situations and like yeah. having like a base understanding of how things work mm -hmm. there's uh, one thing i wanted to bring up because you're talking about in your life in game how you're like just do like uh like throws at the edge I want to talk about the legendary, the legend of the Fendrick Lamar, you know, the Andy. <laughs> the Dathro Dathro. Yeah. Yeah. Because it used to be the Zade, right? It used to be, yeah. And legend then he kind of coined it. Legend has it, you taught it to him, and then your neutral <laughs> grew, and then Fendi just always did that. What's I don't know if I taught it? it to him, but like, maybe he just saw me do it all the time, <laughs> and then, I don't, I don't really know, but I know he just calls it the Fendi, and every time he commentated my sets... He would just get super hype at just down throw down tilt, which is probably the least hype thing a Mark can do. <laughs> uh, it's funny, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That that used to be that was the first thing I got good at, really. Like my dash dance against this one spacey player at Virginia Tech. <laughs> I just got really good at spacing against overshoot and air, just barely <laughs> outside of it, pivot grabbing and then gimping. And then I realized at top level, I was like, holy shit, this isn't gonna cut it <laughs> um i gotta do some other stuff so yeah <laughs> i just love the down throw down tilt you know it's an iconic it's piece of... yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh. so um god where were we where was the point where you realized that you kind of wanted to take melee more seriously and like take it to the next level it's like, mm. was that the mindset you had, like, when you're playing Plup? Like, when you beat, got that win on Plup, or when you got that win on Leffen, or... Was Seriously, it... as in, like, my occupation, or as in, just in comp competition in general? Like, as your, almost as your occu occupation, right? Because you're, comes okay. a point where you're, like, a hobby player, <laughs> and you're still top 100, and then there's a point where you're, like, I am, like, a melee player now, where you're... I think it's when I got learning. sponsored by PG. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of gave some legitimacy to what I was doing. Like I had more structure. I was getting paid to do it, um, paid for travel. That's in my head. I was still like, I'm going to get a job out of college. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be like an IT consultant or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was still something in my head. But then out of college, I was like, you know what? People take gap years. Yeah. I want to just give it all into melee. And I did, uh, ended up winning Shine that year, which was awesome, and doing pretty pretty solid um, the whole 20, 2019 year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, the more I did it, the more I realized I could actually make like a living off of it. Um, and now I'm I'm happy that I'm happy with my new team, Golden Guardians, and yeah, shout uh, out to Norcal, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stream is working out. I actually got to see their office before Summit. Um, it's not in NorCal, it's in LA. Yeah. But they're awesome people, and I'm really happy to work with them. Uh, yeah, I feel I feel good about... I feel stable in Melee right now, and I think Melee is going to continue to grow. Uh, even though it seems scary for a second, uh, I think there's always a strong lifeblood within the scene that's going to keep it going. I feel like a common sentiment I've seen a lot lately is everyone feels really good about melee right now. Like a lot of people who have been like kind of pulled out for the last like year or two. Like yeah. Everyone I'm talking to is like just really excited to play again. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Cause like uh, there's a couple of things I just remember I want to touch on like 2014 melee like the college scenes were like wild. Cause like that's when I was like in school too. That's like what's left me in, yeah. yeah. Like, that's where, like, so many good players came from. Like, uh, that's where, like, Face Roll got his big big grind. Like, most of Irvine. Like, mm -hmm. Ralph and NorCal had, like, a huge, huge boom then. And it's just, like, you're seeing, like, all these, like, young, promising players popping up from their, like, yeah. old scenes. Because we all kind of yeah, had these, like, like, bubbles where we just played, like, nonstop. Yeah, even the Melee games, like, <laughs> those were those are huge. Like, <laughs> that, was, that was awesome for college. And... If you look at local scenes and their PRs, I guarantee you so many of them started yeah. in their college scene. Yeah, I'm hoping to see like 
another boob in the college scene somehow. I hope so. Ultimate and whatnot, like. Yeah. That's what we've been seeing like a little bit at our locals. It's like some players switching over, but be nice to see another huge boom. I'm a little sad that Virginia Tech's local scene is not as uh, it's it's doing okay. Mm -hmm. It's doing it's doing pretty good. It's not nearly as close as it was in its prime, like when. When I was there in like 2015, 2016, mm-hmm. um, I just hope it can be brought back somehow, <laughs> like up to up to crazier standards. <laughs> yeah, you can you can help with that too. You know, just make an appearance at Virginia Tech. They can be like, "Oh, <laughs> come meet Genesis champion Zane," and then just I, I wonder if that would actually work. I, I've been meaning to visit too. I think like because you know how schools have those like. Uh, like the club days or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah. that's the day you could go and you could just be like, yo, I'm Zane. <laughs> and I get all like the fanboys interested in Melee. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> but um, what do you think's like next for you now? You know, like Summit's over. Like what tournaments are you looking forward to? Like what are your plans? Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going back to LA actually in, on March 7th for like content for the Golden Guardians. Mm-hmm. So not for any format or anything. It's just like a five day thing where it's just going to be like a crossover stuff with other teams, like the uh, car teams and then the league team. Mm-hmm. Um, that'll be fun. Then after that, <laughs> I'm going to press less, which is in Canada. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it has me and Cody. So that's that should be interesting. It's not like a crazy big tournament, yeah. but it'll be cool for like a weekend. Then after that is uh, Full Bloom. Yeah. Uh, which I need to sign up for, actually. <laughs> uh, is, is Full Bloom going to be like the chill, no gods, like kind of vibe? I, I hope or... not. Because last year it was, and yeah. I was pissed because I played <laughs> I played Zach <laughs> and Grins. <laughs> um, I, I think Mango is probably going to go. Uh-huh. And maybe Leffen. So I, I think hopefully it turns out to be something bigger than it was last year. Cause even last year was awesome. It's just missing like top, top level competition. Yeah. Um, and then pound is the week after that. But so it's kind of back to back to back. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited. I love, I love traveling and I love competing. So yeah, it's like, um, it's so wild to me. Cause like, even when I said like, Oh no gods at full blue, I'm just like, wait, Zane's like top, top seed player now. Like, <laughs> It's weird. It was weird to think about that I was first at Summit. Yeah. It was kind of like, if I thought back to myself in like 2014 and I'd seen that bracket, it's just weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, realistically, like, no one ever is like, everyone likes to joke, like, oh, I'll be first seed one day, right? But it's like, in your head, realistic, you're like, you know, maybe like top eight seeds is like realistic, but it's like, just legit first seed over like HBox, Mango, like, Left and... Yeah, it was. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I always did have a goal to be number one. Like, if you asked me if I thought it was going to happen, I'd probably, I would say yes, because uh-huh. I had conviction in it. <laughs> but to actually get the confirmation would have been, mm-hmm. would have been crazy. <laughs> yeah. I like, I've been thinking back to like when you came to San Diego for Pat's house. and like, That was so fun. That was like two years ago. And it's just like, yeah, it's just like, I can't believe like, Zay lost the duck bed, and then now he's just like bopping H box like nonstop, because you had like that huge, twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that Pat's house three was super fun actually. That was the first time, first and only time I've been to San Diego. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And it's probably one of my favorite areas that yeah. I, that I got to see, and the tournament was really fun. That was like a one of the cool coolest non god tournaments. Yeah. I, I think so, especially because, like, I don't want to be BM, but, like, Duck winning is kind of hype because, like, a Samus hasn't, like, won anything. And, like, yeah, it was it was cool. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, uh... like, the players that were there were, like, at that time, like, my favorite players. Like, it was, like, what? Like, you, Duck, Wad, Rishi, KJH, Santi, Crush. Crush like, was there, yeah. As bad. Like, um... if Melee were only these players, like, I wouldn't be that sad if, like, everyone else that wasn't there, like, just vanished. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely fun. <laughs> I guess like one last question on the grind. It was like what changed in twenty nineteen? 
Not even just thinking about like Pat's house to winning shine in like less than a year. <laughs> I uh, I think a big part of it is that the better you get, the more access you get to top level play. Mm -hmm. So it kind of snowballs where once you become like a known Marth player, Leffen's going to want to play you to warm up for Mewtwo King or Mango's going to want to warm up to play you. And so the more practice I got there, it, it kind of, that, that was like the fastest I improved. Because you, you speed up your play yeah. a bunch. It's like, holy shit, they're outpacing me in every level and like, mm -hmm. I got to keep up. And I would think about those friendlies. Like, I'd go back to school and be like, <laughs> I would th I would think about how Mango played like I'd remember with like how he's under sheep daring gas smashing me and like edge guarding better than anyone I've seen and like I gotta match my pace I have to, I have to everyone I play mm -hmm. I have to try to play at that pace that I was playing against Mango and I think that was that was pretty important mm -hmm. I feel like you see it a lot with like the puff mains because they're always getting like that god practice yeah, like Snowy yeah. had like this huge jump, like kind of yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's if, cool. If not for a moment, yeah. <laughs> that's cool though. I think like uh, I forgot who in commentary is talking about, it, but someone was like, "Oh, Mango's just saying Zane's a threat now." Like, not talking about like H box or like Leffen. So, like, yeah, kind of. Yeah, that was that was Scar, I think. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> <sighs> But yeah, I don't have many questions left, but uh, you've been doing a lot of content, making all those videos. Enjoy yeah, that have you seen any of them? Have you seen yeah, I, I've, I've like seen them as they come out or as I see them on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's really fun. Uh, personally, I can't, when it comes to content, I can't do like the typical reaction videos. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> I just can't bring myself to do it. It, it feels so inorganic and... The, like the thumbnails and stuff, I, I won't do it. But these sketches, I feel like they're definitely higher effort, but I, I enjoy the final product and uh, I enjoy making them. Yeah. And I feel like it'll pay off in the long run. Um, it seems like you're having a lot of fun with it too, which is like yeah, the most important I, part. I get to, it's basically like hanging out every weekend and we just like, <laughs> we, we get it done, but it's still fun to make. Yeah. Um, and then I actually filmed a sketch with the Golden Guardians when I went to the office, and they have like a really good filming team. Mm -hmm. So that was that was awesome. Something that I want to keep. Every time I go to LA, I want to make some more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel good about content and streaming has been going well. I still need, like, you can see my background is. I don't know why there's a Christmas tree and there's a <laughs> unicorn here. Like, there's no, there's nothing going on here. Yeah. So they're gonna, they're actually helping me get like what cool lighting and oh, then, that's like, awesome. Print furniture and then a new mic which i desperately need and uh a streaming deck so my stream is going to be vamped revamped um been getting good viewership i think i think the thing that happens is that the youtube translates yeah to the streaming where people see these sketches and then they they're curious to see what i'm like in person <laughs> so they they come over to the stream so the viewership has been really good uh almost has 600 subs now which i'm pretty happy about um yeah, content's been good. Yeah, I feel like the, that grind is so important. I feel like a lot of melee players almost forget about <laughs> yeah. it sometimes. For sure, for sure. What is like your your end vision? You know, like what is your goal? Like, what do you want to accomplish uh, by the end of your melee career? Or even I want to be the greatest melee? of all time. That's that's just the way I am, <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably going to be painful, but. What do you think it'll take, like, to be the greatest of all time, especially this late in melee? It, the the thing I've always feared is melee dying before I get the chance to leave an imprint. Mm -hmm. And I, the more I think about it, the sillier that sounds. Just because I feel like melee is going to be around for a good while, <laughs> and I think I'm not. What gives me um, a lot of confidence and hope is that I don't feel like I'm anywhere close to how good I can be. Mm -hmm. And that's what I always think after I lose at tournaments is like, I can improve so much more and I'm going to try to like, like way, way more um, in terms of every facet of my play. 
-hmm. So when I think about that Zane in the future, I think that I can become the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> That's hype. I'm excited to see it. What Thanks. do you think about all the Fox Marth conversation and all the Foxes complaining about Marth recently? It's, it's, it's annoying, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't. So when I played Cody that first time at Summit, as soon as I downered him, before I even fist bump him, I just hear, yeah, I think I'm done with that matchup, man. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I supposed to say realistically in that situation? Like, I just kind of nod in my head. I don't even have time to be happy with myself. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'm just nodding my head like a jackass. You've made, <laughs> like, foxes just hate Marth. Like, everyone was hating Falcon they for a minute. They hate Marth. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's wild. I don't know. I, I don't... I don't quite vibe with the complaining. Um, I think it's fine if you think Marth. I think it's fine if you think Fox loses terribly, but just don't. I think the incessant complaining is just something that's intrinsically annoying. <laughs> it's just like if you're if you think it's so bad, then just switch and just be done with it. Yeah. But then at the same time, I kind of understand because it's like part of their brand. <laughs> like it goes beyond the game. It's like. Leffen's brand is a a big part of it is complaining, and people <laughs> flock flock to that. So I'm, I think a good amount of it is intentional, but for uh, me, it's just like a little noxious. <laughs> to, to like, it's just incessant. So, do you welcome uh, the sheiks? The fox base trying to switch to sheik for you? Yeah, I'm trying to be plump. So if I get that practice, then. I, my end goal is to make them think that Sheik Marth is terrible <laughs> so that they move on to something else until there's nothing left except the Marth and then mm -hmm. I'm just going to beat them at that. <laughs> That's so funny. I just... I, yeah, I honestly don't think that Fox Marth is that bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think FD makes it pretty bad. It's definitely a momentum killer, mm -hmm. but I still think it's a playable matchup at top level. Mm-hmm. You are whipping yeah. them pretty hard on FD, though. It's pretty funny. They're, like, trying to make yeah. FD, like, a counter pick, not a legal stage where the start is just... I'm, I'm down. I, yeah. th I think FD is kind of silly, uh, <laughs> just because it's so one note as a stage. Mm -hmm. um, it would definitely hurt me. and I would be more mad about FD being banned in Marth Sheik, because mm -hmm. I feel like that's a fair stage, and it's Marth's strongest in the matchup. Yeah. If that were banned, then kind of suck. <laughs> what do you think, like, the Foxes are doing <clears throat> wrong? Uh, I think a lot, a big problem is that they don't utilize CC well enough. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity to just take a Marth hit at low percent. Like, force yourself close in, get hit by a down tilt, get hit by a fair, and then run and grab, or run and drill, run and up smash. Um, I think a lot of Foxes spam slide off DI too much to the point of predictability. And then a lot of Foxes, Leffen's better at this, but they just cycle through the same mix-ups and the same patterns, and then they get mad. <laughs> but I'm, I feel like I'm playing a rhythm game sometimes, uh -huh. where I'm like, okay, I'm down tilting, they'll full hop drill, and now I dash back grab, or then I fair the drill. <laughs> okay, now they're going to short hop nair. They're getting frustrated, they're going to try to running shine or like overshoot there and then i want to like it, it's just like it feels like i'm breaking down the same boss battle a lot of the time so um you're just saying you're on another level than them like you're one <laughs> I, th I think leffen mixes up way not in tournament he played like dog shit in tournament versus me <laughs> and i i don't think that's an accurate representation of what the matchup should look like because uh -huh. if we when we play friendlies he's like he's good <laughs> but uh yeah i think that's a big problem and then there's, there's some other stuff like Leffen will complain about SCI a lot, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty frustrating. <laughs> uh, granted, like y your move becomes a reversal and then you get zero to death off of it. That's pretty whack. Mm -hmm. But like you can mix up your upper, like they do mix it up. Just like sometimes in tournament, it's just like they'll go for the easier upper instead of trying to like actually mix up my SCI. Mm -hmm. So those those are like the biggest things. What do you think is the most whack thing that Marth can do? Or that when you do it, you're just kind of like, you cheesed them, but like you're just like I'm gonna take it. Run up F smash, at low percents. 
because I have so little to lose by doing it. If if I do a run up S match and I'm at like ten percent, mm -hmm. how how badly are they gonna punish me if they shield it? Like maybe I get up throw and back aired, maybe I get up throw up aired, but I can try to SDI it. Mm -hmm. The risk reward of it is so insane. And if I land it and I tipper it, they're dead. <laughs> so like that's that's pretty whack. And that's what Mutant King is a god at. Like uh -huh. I, I started I just watched him, I was like, all right, there's no reason for me not to do this. <laughs> so I started implementing it more. That's sick. Oh, that's it for the questions I have. If anyone in chat cool. has any questions for Zane. Yeah, totally. There's all the the melee stats nerds in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh thanks for coming on though. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. Fun. I feel like I got to talk about some stuff that I don't usually I, I feel like when I'm on stream yeah I, I could use this on my stream because it's hard for me to get like a conversation starter and just kind of rip off of it yeah uh, <laughs> I, but yeah I, I kind of aim for these to be like more more about the player and less about like specific melee stuff just because I feel like that gets shown like in gameplay and whatnot definitely yeah oh. anyone yeah, in that's chat? So fun. Someone asked earlier what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. It's, uh... Ooh, um, probably. I like pist. It's like a three-way tie among pistachio, salted caramel, and cookie dough. That's a wide variety of flavors. Yeah, <laughs> but I love them all. <laughs> um, yeah, those ones are good. Oh, I also like rum raisin. God damn it. <laughs> Someone asked if you're still afraid to fight Falcon in the future, or do you think you figured that out? I wouldn't say I figured it out. It's still, it's still a really scary matchup, but mm -hmm. I'm definitely way more confident in it, and I feel like I'm favored against every Falcon right now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'll say. Um, someone says, how do you know what you're doing is considered a bad habit? Sorry, you cut out for a second. Someone... You say considered a bad habit? Yeah. Like, um, when you're doing something, you consider, like, you realize, oh, this is a bad habit. Like, I, I shouldn't see. be doing this as much in these situations. I mean, it it comes out more through analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look, just ask yourself, why am I getting hit? And just mark down every timestamp of where you got hit. And then you'll just see why it's a bad habit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, it probably just, like, running there as Marth, right? It's like okay, yeah. every every character is gonna be able to punish this for the most part. Um, just just it all comes out through analysis. I feel like. Do you did you realize like at a point like your super edge canceling all the time was becoming a problem because people were just expecting it or? Yeah 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 like I would just always descend like that because it was so ingrained. <laughs> it's just like, so fun. Shit. Too. I was like people yeah it is really fun. <laughs> it's like I'm making a little mini game of getting down. <laughs> But people, people started like punishing the exact spots where I'd land, and I was like, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> and then it ended up working out for me because people thought I had a cancel and stuff. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Chroma asks, where do you want to be in five years? In general, oh man, uh, <laughs> probably way richer and still playing melee. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty sick. All right. Yeah. Algebra. Or TL343 asks, Marth has historically had a harder time dominating mid or low tier characters compared to Fox, Sheik, ETC, and it's often hard to get top level practice in weird matchups. What's your strategy for improving in those matchups? Um, particularly versus Pikachu, I had to find someone, Tyler Swift, to grind with. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> obviously, it's hard, but Netplay gives you good access to practice in almost every matchup. And for Marth specifically, it doesn't work the same way. Like, he has to play super lame against mid and low tiers, <laughs> where the the strategy is wall out, and that's it. Like, don't try to, de don't try to scrap with the low tier, mid tier. Don't try to get fancy with them. Just wall them out, because they're mid, mid and low tiers, and they don't have many answers <laughs> to it. So when, when I think about, like, I hate playing mid tiers just because I have like little. I hate playing Ganondorf actually. The most. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it just always, always resort to walling them out. 
as a bard. Why specifically Ganon? Did you have like an early Ganon demon when you first started playing? No, not even. <laughs> I don't know. You're sounding like Ken like... right now because Ken always just complains. Does he hate Ganon? Ganon? Yeah, he hates Ganon. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's a Red Marth main thing. He, he he hits pretty hard, and then you can't really <laughs> like go in that much. <laughs> so you just gotta wall keep walling him out, and it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I actually lost a nun in that uh, Sammy singles like, when he switched <laughs> again. And, um, granted, I didn't play it super properly, but yeah. <laughs> Ganon's busted. I agree. You just yeah. mess, It's just a game of not messing up for yourself or else you just die. Exactly. Yeah. Someone's asking, if <coughs> is asking, what music did you listen to in your solo practice? What are some of your favorite bangers from the <laughs> dorm room solo practice times? Yeah, sure. Uh, the most, uh, the biggest one that comes to mind is Anderson Peck's Malibu. Mm. Um, that came out in 2016, I believe. Uh, and that's when I, that's probably what I listened to most. My, my roommate showed me the album and then I just bumped it like every day while, while practicing. And then on those, on that album, I really like Come Down and Parking Lot and Strawberry Seasons. Those are, those are like my favorite. And then another, my tournament song was Forgiveness by Maiden Heights, which is used in a Mango Combo video. If you've seen his press start combo, combo video, it's that one song. You should look it up, okay. like everyone in chat. But yeah, it's it's really good. And it's like it's like trance music that really puts you in a good competitive mode. <laughs> Chroma so, is ecstatically saying that song is a banger. It is, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't listen to music anymore when I play. But yeah. back when I did, I would listen to exclusively that on repeat. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll take one more question, which is Kermas, sure. which is who are your comedic influences, if any? Ooh, okay. Yeah. Uh, definitely both of my siblings. I have one older sister, one older brother, and they've left like a big comedic imprint. It's just like, it, it's definitely like a big part of my personality. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when it comes to like actual comedy world, back in high school, it used to be Aziz and Sorry, <laughs> but not so much. I'm not even like a big fan anymore, just because I don't know. Not not that funny to me anymore. <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to think. I really like on Netflix. Uh, I think you should leave. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's like a really good sketch comedy show. And then, oh, Nathan Fielder. I really love Nathan for you. Uh -huh. It's one of my favorite, favorite shows. It's I not like it's, everything's I, making sense now about your skits. The more you <laughs> talk about the stuff you like. Yeah, I really like Nathan for you. And then the show that's probably had the most influence on me is Arrested Development. Oh, that's um, a classic. Yeah. I think Arrested Development had a pretty... It was so ahead of its time in terms of like meme culture. Like it's before memes were a thing, really. But like, had so many long running bits. Yeah. And like so many clever jokes, just like season long, like or, like they they go past seasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, that show is incredible. Yeah. Oh. I did say master of none is mediocre. I'm looking at the chat. I am not a master of none fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jack Dylan was Nathan for you and Smash. I agree. I get I get big Nathan Fielder vibes from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any last shout outs you want to do? Anything you want to plug? Uh, yeah. Up? Check out my stream tomorrow, guys. <laughs> um, Twitch.tv slash Zane SSBM. Going to be playing more Melee. Maybe with Leffen again. Uh, I told him I'm down every single day. So whenever he wants to, we'll play. Um, God, it's so sick how you can play him now. Oh, no yeah, it's cool. It's cool. And then... Every Tuesday, I upload a sketch, a YouTube sketch. Um, so check those out. I'm filming this weekend. I'm gonna try to get a few done, and then I have a Golden Guardians one that's being edited right now. And then, yeah, I think that's about it. Shout out to Golden Guardians. Um, they're super awesome. Can't wait to film with them some more soon. And that's it. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Thanks for coming on, Zane. Yep. Have a good rest of your night. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, of course. All right.